Hi, this is Shadi. So today we will be discussing one of the oldest koryu in Japanese jiu-jitsu, Take no Uchi Ryu. So if you don't know the story or the legend behind it, so the practitioners or the founder was training with a wooden sword and so a white-haired hermit appeared to him telling him to cut the sword in half or the wooden sword in half and so now you have the what is called the koshi no mawari or the uh, techniques from the waist which is small knives and this is largely their arsenal there is a lot of open hand techniques like throwing techniques which we will see but it's a lot about self-defense obviously a koryu that's over um, 400 years old it's not going to be oriented towards competition and you will see some elements of today being incorporated but still relevant so here you see there is self-defense there is arresting techniques with the rope uh, and uh, of course uh, striking with throwing techniques of course it's not intended for competition it's for self-defense um, maybe police etc so it's nice to see however some elements uh, still being present in today's grappling however uh, they used to serve a different uh, purpose so the first one being is uh, the guard now obviously the guard is very uh, offensive and at the same time it can protect you your legs are very very powerful so here you see someone is trying to uh, threaten you coming from behind you you go forward in order to roll back uh, into them you never go to the side and here you put your legs as a shield between you and them obviously controlling uh, their hands all the way to the end because obviously they're holding a knife and from there you can do a lot of uh, things like sweeping them and then uh, you know, pushing them kicking them obviously here you see Hickson demonstrating the self-defense benefits of this um, this is from his uh, galler or self-defense unit you see you always uh, rotate and follow them along never turn your back keeping your legs between them so here you see you don't go to your side because they can still control you and collapse you but rather you go forward and then roll to the side to face them much like we just saw but uh, controlling the arms when there is a knife is obviously uh, it's going to be very important but here Hickson gives the uh, the example of the beach in Brazil. Uh, someone can ambush you. Now here is uh, multiple attackers. When you have a knife, not defending against the knife, but you rather have a knife. So you need to get one arm close to you in order to retrieve the knife, and then you attack the first one that is closest, and then go back to the second. Here you see an attack on the femoral artery, which obviously can be lethal we can bleed until death essentially and um, the koshi no mawari or the uh, around the waist which that that's what it means is obviously going to be your weapons so it's not just open hand um, now this one is actually quite uh, funny so you bring your hand you do a front flip and then you <laughs> kick them both and uh you're obviously going to see some things that are greatly exaggerated with time being practiced as a form of just you know technical excellency and you know it's not something that you're actually going to do the, the first one obviously it can be done but then <laughs> this one is actually you know every art has that little thing that is you know if you step away you can just have a laugh about it so jujitsu guys before you start commenting below a lot of you guys do this so please you're not in a position to leave any type of comments regarding this self-defense or whatever it may be so like I said every art has something that is a bit exaggerated simply to demonstrate uh, fundamentals or showing the a beauty of a particular technique but not so much uh, when it comes to practicality so um, just to say Berimbolos can be aesthetically pleasing, but they are no way, shape, or form something you would rely on. Now, um, 
here, for example, this, this this lock is actually quite um, nice. You maintain uh, on the hair, and you actually rotate and push with your head. It doesn't have to be up. It can be uh, towards them, where they have their arm extended towards them, or uh, in front of them, not like this, close to the hip. So it's um, these are little tricks that are quite neat, I find. Here you see the um, Ganseki Otoshi, or... Uh, what do we call in judo kataguruma or fireman scary in wrestling terms it also obviously did not come solely from wrestling into judo and uh here you see there are multiple variations to this you can see it in sumo here you see it also in this uh jujitsu school one of the oldest so this one here is also quite nice that you can also see its effect in kendo as well so you see you block there's the blade uh, in the way or between you and you know swordsmen they always have that one leg forward and it is very prone to something like deashi harai and it can easily do it by pushing against them while the foot goes the opposite direction and it is interesting to see all these elements from guard to foot sweeps to proper throwing techniques the sword, the knife in this old jujitsu school and um, these elements now, a lot of them, we take them into competition with us, sports or no sports, self-defense. These are principles that are very functional against someone who is resisting or trying to exert control and dominance over you for sports reasons or uh, maybe aggression. Either way, you still use these fundamentals centuries later and um, you can come out victorious so here you see in kendo again the one foot is forward and the, the blade is blocked you can easily sweep the foot so um, it's quite interesting what this uh, old ryuha has to offer the take no uchi ryu so uh, it's nice to see all these elements here and there um, but as you can see what we do, whether it's jujitsu, judo, etc., these are all different expressions of the same art. We specialize in some while just learning some just to understand them, and the others can specialize in something else. So, if you have anything to add, please let me know down below. Consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive content, and your support would mean greatly to keep this going. And uh, as always, this was Shadi and Thank you very much for listening.